In the past few years, there's been many questions regarding the speed and the future of Takamoto Katsuta. So I'll give you a short overview of Taka. Is he any good? Will he get any better? Why even is he in the WRC? And why Taka is one of the most important drivers in WRC right now? Takamoto was first and foremost a circuit racing driver. He began his career karting in Japan and moved on to the Japanese Formula 3 championship in 2012. He impressed everybody by finishing third in his first season and was eventually promoted to full championship driver. Things got even better in 2013 with Taka winning two races and finishing second in the overall championship. 2014 was not so good. He ended up underperforming and only managed to grab fourth in the overall championship, which was vastly disappointing for the Formula Big Bosses. I don't know who the Formula Big Bosses are, I just know they're big bosses. During his final year in Formula 3, Takasan began rallying in Japanese local championship and won his class in the second rally he entered. His main goal now was getting picked up by Toyota's development driver program. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past, 30 years ago. In the beginning of 2015, Toyota announced that they are returning to the WRC with the new regulations in 2017. But talks were already circulating in mid-2014 that Toyota may want to come back. After all, we saw Tommy McKinnon build a four-wheel drive GT86 just to take Toyota post Akio Toyota on a small ride on Onimboja and convince him that Tommy and his Finnish team was the right choice to build Toyota's WRC car. Tommy literally drove the Finns to another victory. So, because Toyota was coming back to the WRC, Toyota wanted that one Japanese driver was driving their WRC car and they didn't want him to be atrocious. So driver development program was set up in Europe under the supervision of Tommy McKinnon. The drivers chosen were Takamoto Katsuta and Hiroki Arai. Now, if we look at these drivers, Hiroki was definitely the Vegas betting favorite. His father was the 2007 production WRC champion and a well-respected name in the WRC circle. Hiroki also had two full rally seasons under his belt and Takamoto had never even driven a four-wheel drive rally car. But Taka's father was also a rally driver and a well-respected one in Japan. But he's only had two rallies in his life outside of Japan, so Taka was definitely the underdog here. In the first year in Europe, they were handed Subaru Impreza's, which were serviced by Tommy Magnan Racing. There wasn't really much left of the Subarus at the end of the year, and the choice was made to move the two up to an R5 car. After two years of driving the R5 cars, it was becoming clear who was the superior driver in the Toyota program. Takasan even won the Swedish WRC rally in WRC2 class, but Hiroki wasn't crazy slow, he just was extremely inconsistent. One stage he'll lose a second to the winner, and on the next stage he'll lose a minute. At the end of 2018, the decision was made to sack Hiroki Arai and focus only on Takamoto's development. In the beginning of 2019, Taka was groomed to step into the WRC car at the end of the year. His pace with the R5 car got even better, but a few small mistakes ruined good results. In terms of speed, he was half a second per kilometer slower than Roman Perra which is really good considering that Taka started rally driving when he was a grown man and Rovampera started rally driving before he could walk. His first WRC car start came in Rally Germany, where he finished 10th. He was struggling with confidence the whole rally because the main objective was to finish the rally. His next rally in the WRC car was in Spain, where a small gearbox issue ruined the good result. He was posting top 10 times regularly, which definitely was a surprise to many people in the WRC service park. His first burst of real speed was at Rally Estonia 2020, where he was lying 5th overall before he went off the road on the last day. Before he went off the road, he was leading Rovan Peras, Suninen and Lappi, and he was over a minute ahead of Lubet and Greensmith, who you can argue have the same amount of experience with the WRC car. He grabbed his first stage win in Monza, on the power stage, and showed great speed in Italy, but his result was ruined by a silly mistake he made on SS1. The conditions were extremely hard in Monza, with the mud and rain everywhere on the roads, so for me, these times were even more impressive by Taka. Takamoto is definitely not a slow driver, and he will get only faster throughout the years, 
with the coaching of Juho Hanninen and the Toyota management team, who also have some experience in rally driving, Taka will be a real problem in the future. And this is what every rally fan in the world should be praying for. Having an Asian driver who is also fast and capable of winning is a major boost for WRC, with the series getting more fans from Asia to follow the championship. Most of the manufacturers who have shown interest of joining the WRC are also from Asia. Takamoto is showing that the Japanese driver can be on the top level in the WRC, which is going to give confidence to other Japanese or Asian drivers and manufacturers that you can have an Asian car and an Asian driver and still be in the top of the WRC, which has been vastly dominated by European manufacturers and drivers. And there has been this stereotype that if you're not from Europe, you're never going to win the WRC event or championship. Yes, I know. Taka is not on the top right now, but every sign is showing that he can definitely get there and that he's not that far off considering the experiences that he has. I think we'll see real glimpses of Taka's brilliance in 2021, with the only question being right now if he can match his speed with stability. So everybody get used to Takamoto, because he's going to be in the WRC for a long time.